Our work is animated by a very simple, but also, in my opinion, profound idea. And that is, because people are connected, their health is connected. All of us have our friends, our relatives, our neighbors, our coworkers, and all those people in turn have similar individuals. And that all together then we develop these vast, elaborate, ornate network structures, these social networks. And that we proceed to live out our lives embedded within these networks. Taking that idea in and understanding it gives us whole new ways to understand humanity. And in addition, understanding this fundamental reality of our humanity, in my judgment, not only advances our understanding of our, ourselves, but also gives us new opportunities to intervene in the world to make it better. In the past, it hasn't been possible to take advantage of this understanding of human social interactions in order to improve people's health because we haven't actually been able to discern these connections between individuals. So the challenge is, how can we map networks? Can we discern the interactions between people? And if we map out these ties, can we then pick individuals from within a population, some structurally influential subset of the population, and persuade them to do something desirable with respect to public health? We can get whole villages, in fact, whole populations, to change their behavior for the better. So in this study, with support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and with our partners at the Inter-American Development Bank and the Ministry of Health in Honduras, what we're doing is, is we're conducting the largest ever mapping of face-to-face -face networks in the highlands of Honduras. It's a very poor part of the world, coffee growing region, very hilly. People in this part of the world live on less than $2 a day. And what we're doing is, is we're mapping these face-to-face -face networks of these 160 villages. And then we're experimentally, randomly assigning different villages to differing targeting algorithms. So all the villages are getting the same public health intervention. But we are choosing individuals differently across the villages to evaluate if we don't have enough money to give it to everyone. To whom should we give these interventions so that if they adopt the intervention, the whole village will adopt the intervention. We're very excited to be applying these network strategies here in Honduras, in the Copan region, where we have seen in the past really high rates of infant mortality and maternal morbidity. So our team, we're, we are not interventionists, we are network scientists. So for us it made the most sense to team up with somebody who had a lot of experience in that area and was also knowledgeable and experienced in Honduras. So the Gates Foundation helped us form a partnership with the Inter-American Development Bank and they are in charge of implementing the intervention. So right now the intervention package will really will focus on specific things um, that can affect maternal outcomes and uh, neonatal outcomes in the newborn care. And Honduras has made a huge improvement, um, but there's still room for us to uh, make an impact. This idea of a targeting algorithm is sort of abstract, but the basic idea is that if you map out these networks and you can only reach a certain fraction of the individuals, who should you pick? So in this study, we have what is known as a two by eight factorial design. We actually have, we're randomly assigning 10 villages to each of 16 different treatments. And the treatments are as follows. The one axis of the treatment varies the fraction of individuals to whom we give the intervention. And in essence, what we're trying to see is artificial tipping points. Can we find what's the minimum number of people that we have to get to adopt an intervention before everyone adopts? The second axis manipulates as how those people are chosen. So sometimes they're chosen at random, and sometimes they're chosen by this network trick that's known as the friendship nomination technique, which doesn't require you to map the whole network. It's a way of identifying more central individuals in the network. People who are more central in the network, those people are more likely to be turned to for advice or just to be spending free time um, with other people in the community. And so this um, training intervention that they've been through uh, then has a chance to spread a lot further. And there are uh, two by eight cells, and in each of those cells we have 10 villages, and then we're seeing at the end uh, in which of those cells do we get the maximum number of uh, individuals cumulatively adopting the intervention. We've had to uh, invent ways to map 
these face-to-face -face networks. So we have a, a software program called Trellis, which can be deployed on tablet computers. It involves taking a photographic census of the entire uh, village and then sending out surveyors into the village and asking the respondents to identify their social connections. This program allows us to collect data on a much more massive scale. The way that this is possible is using uh, Trellis, which is a, a tablet app uh, used for collecting survey data. It has what we call name generators, which are questions about uh, your ties with other people, like who is your uh, very best friend, or who do you consider to be a leader in the village. And an even greater benefit, it's just also way more accurate than any data that has been collected before because we're using pictures to identify um, the relationships between respondents. It was never previously possible to get such accurate data so quickly. I, I grew up here in Honduras, so I've been seeing a lot of these issues over the last, uh, you know, over the last 20 years. And um, knowing that there is something that we can do is really exciting. So what can we do with this knowledge? So what if we understand the structure and function of human social networks? How, how can we take advantage of mathematical, biological, sociological, and psychological understanding of human social interactions to make groups of people more cooperative, more innovative, uh, more healthy, more safe, more wealthy. So this is a central focus of my laboratory at the moment. I mean, it, it gives me goosebumps, this idea that it's possible to use this kind of science to ramp up, to leverage everything that we're trying to do to make the lives of others better. I do think that this project really does represent a significant step forward for, uh, for network research, especially in the public health domain. We've really got three things coming together where we've got entire uh, villages that we're studying, um, and we have an intervention, and we can randomly assign that intervention. No study has ever been collected on this sort of uh, with social networks on this scale with this many different units of analysis. So this project requires new ideas, uh, new tools, new data, uh, new field operations in a challenging part of the world. We have large numbers of people with diverse expertise at multiple sites around the world, all with the mission of trying to identify ways to make the health of underserved communities better, and all with the mission of trying to improve uh, maternal and neonatal uh, health and nutrition.